Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the weapons of hot dogs, horses and hand grenades. Today we are taking a look at a proper oldie. This is the flintlock pistol. So, this is just a generic flintlock. Flint it is uh, not any specific one as far as I am aware. So, uh, regardless, let's begin by going over it, its history. So, flintlock. What, how did we get here? Well, of course, we all know about the Chinese, they created gunpowder, and eventually the Europeans got their hands on it, and they started making guns. And if you think about early guns, you would usually think flintlock. Well, the average person would probably think flintlock. However, that is not actually the earlier guns. The earliest guns would actually be matchlock. And if you take a look here, we have a flint here. Instead of a flint and this steel here, what a matchlock would have is it would have a fuse, a piece of like rope or something, and then it would do the same motion, whoosh, light the gunpowder, and you know, you get the whole process. Of course, matchlock has a couple of big disadvantages. First of all, it uses something that's already burning. Gunpowder, burning, bad idea. On top of that, and this isn't ideal for wet weather, but matchlock would be even worse since, you know, the flint, or not the flint, but the rope or whatever would be doused out in the rain or whatever. But flintlock you can still short of use, even when wet, because uh, this covers the gunpowder. So those are probably, from my knowledge, the biggest disadvantages of matchlock. However, it was still an improvement over the bow and arrow for the common man. So it saw use in the 14th, 14th, 15th century. Of course, they were always in the lookout for something better. So eventually you would get the wheel lock, which would be again, not a strict improvement really, because you had a springed wheel on the side, a rather big mechanism, which, if I remember correctly, worked similar to flintlock, and you had to wind it up, and then the friction would cause sparks, just like with flintlocks, flint and that would set off the gun. But you, you had to wind up a big rotary spring every single time. It was slow. Eventually, luckily, we got to this style. A flintlock, simple flint and steel, some gunpowder in there, and uh, you're good to go, basically. So, uh, in the 16th century, I believe, flintlocks started becoming norm, and in the 17th century, everyone was using flintlocks. And, fun fact, this was not the case for ships. They would eventually get flintlocks for ships, to a limited extent. The British would start adopting them in the late 18th century, early 19th century, but for the most part you would still have a ma match, light the gun, and boom. Which, th there was some debate on what the captains preferred, so you still saw a lot of quote-unquote matchlock. They weren't locks, they were just matches over flint flintlock cannons in naval use, and I assume in regular artillery use. Which is an interesting side note, because I mean cannons basically work exactly like those er these early pistols and muskets and rifles for that matter, since you also had flintlock rifles. Which this let's uh, do the unsafe thing. It's not rifled. It is a smooth ball, smooth bore. I mean, okay, it doesn't say if it's rifled. So, as you can see there, this is 6 .69 caliber, which is a big boy. Uh, it's this round, because it's not a cartridge. It's your noise, excuse me. And it's made of pure lead. You would make this in the field, you would have your own little kit, some lead, you'd melt it, and uh, be ready. Or you had the option to make it in the field, at least. And this is a good way to brick your... Uh, Flintlock. If you pop a ball in, and there's no charge, there's uh, no fixing it. So, uh... <sighs> I 
don't need that, don't need that. Let's get a new one. So, as I talked, that was the ball, 69 caliber, lead ball, literally round. Later muskets you would also predominantly in the American Civil War get mini balls, which were a lot deadlier, and they weren't just balls. So, as you probably saw, we have a ramrod. Since it is a muscle loader, you're gonna have to uh, pop it in there. Everything, your uh, gunpowder cartridge and everything. Pistol, it has a half cock and a full cock. So full cock, you can fire. Half cock, pull the trigger, nothing happens. So the half cock is your quote unquote safety, but it isn't really a safety. And uh, that covers basically it. That is uh, the pistol. It has uh, no other mentionable features. Oh, and I guess you could use this end as a very effective club. Because it is nice and round and whoosh. But yeah. So let's go through how do you use this thing. So. First of all. You put it in half cock position. And uh, let's start off with the example of a paper cartridge. So paper cartridge, it has everything in the paper. It was the first example of a cartridge. But you don't just whack it all in because that wouldn't work. So how do you use this? First off, you bite the top off. And in there, you can see some gunpowder and a bullet. So you pop some gunpowder in your uh, flash pan, as it's called. And be careful not to uh, tilt it because uh, the gunpowder will disappear. So you pop the gunpowder in there. Come on. Oh. You close it. Now it won't disappear since it's closed. And uh, now you pop the gunpowder in the barrel. And with it you pop the bullet, which is this top bit. And then take your ramrod. And you ram the boy home. All the way in. Take it out. Ramrod back in. And then you go into uh, full cock position, I guess. You take aim, and you'll notice something. First of all, it doesn't have any sides. Second off, as soon as I fire, there's going to be a rather significant delay. Did I miss? I didn't have enough gunpowder left over. So, if you don't put enough gunpowder in, this will happen. You can see the cartridge still stuck there. So now this has yet again become a useful brick, useless brick. But you could notice that there was a big delay before you heard a pop. And that's because the fire has to go from the flash pan into the, buyer, into the firing chamber, unlike with a percussion cap where it's just boom and it goes immediately. And the more you put in the flash pan, the longer the ignition is. So Put as little as possible, and you will have the best reaction time. Anyways, let's uh, throw this waste of space away, and let's try that again. Oops, without walking through my uh, table. So, you half cock, take the cartridge, bite the top, put a some in, close it. Gunpowder down the barrel with the bullet. Use the ramrod. Put that back. Oops, put it back. Full cock. Take aim. There we go. That's the correct amount. So. I am going to show you something cool. So, first of all, let me stand a bit more mental. We have a couple of... Uh, couple of uh, these things, which contain gunpowder, so we can uh, pop some gunpowder in there. Close that. Pop some gunpowder in here. The most reliable is, of course, to use a paper cartridge, because then you get the exact amount that you want to have. But, since this is a muzzle loader, 
there is something cool we can do. If I don't mess this up. So we have one bullet. Let's ram that home. Okay, it's in. And we take a second bullet. Oops, uh, not the paper cartridge. So in naval use, this would be double shot, where you would do that with cannons. You'd put two cannonballs. You'd greatly reduce range, but you had double the firepower, basically. Let's pop that in. So that, that is good for if you're up close. I don't know if it has its own term for use with muskets, but naval use, double shot. And uh, you got two balls now. If we take aim. I, I only heard one thing. Ah, yeah. So if we uh, go here, as you can see, one, two. So two hits. Was that from earlier? Can't remember that hit. Oh well. So, uh, if you need some extra firepower, pop two balls in there. You'll reduce your range and accuracy, but double the firepower. Basically a ghetto shotgun in a way. Which, I would love a blunderbuss in game. But, uh, like I've mentioned though, you gotta be careful. If we take, let's take this one this time. Pop some there. Close it. And let's just... Can I just leave you in here? Yeah. Uh, let's just give it some time. And uh, this is why paper cartridge, military issue, safe, since it has exactly what you need in terms of for your flash pan and for your uh, bore. Okay. You can probably, you might be able to see the gunpowder through there. If we tip it, should fall out. Yep. Let's refill that. We don't want to waste anything. There we go. Should be good. Now if we take a bullet, ramrod, it is a slow thing to reload. I believe historically you could get like three or four shots a minute. Hey, give me the ramrod, which is a bit slow. Like it is not ideal. You can use it, but definitely not ideal. Okay, so uh, the bullet won't go any further than this. Uh, so, some of you more uh, cocked, bright people might know what's happening next. Still hit! And if this was real life, I would have been pretty badly hurt. And now let's see if we can find the result. There we go. That's what's left. Are there any other bits? Uh, not that I can see. One thing's for sure, you're not using this as a firearm anymore. Maybe as a club? But it's useless. So uh, kids, don't overload your pistol. At Flintlock, many things can go wrong. And I think there's uh, one more thing I want to show with the Flintlock. And... Uh, just how like interactive it is, is why I love this, because it is super interactive, it is super inconvenient for literally every use, but it's cool. So let's half cock, let's get our black powder flask. Pop some in the flash pan. Wait, let's see if we can, if I'm not wrong, you can press, if you press the trigger, you do little uh, dabs of uh, gunpowder, so I guess I should show you the fire rate difference. I'll just shove this, no bullets here, because that's time. So that's one dab. Did the gunpowder just fall out? So one dab. Pretty quick. And if I now... Just fill it up. And cock it. 
you could probably hear the time difference between the fire. So quite a difference. So if you just do one dab, a lot quicker for reload. Close. Or a lot quicker for fire. Now let's pop some gunpowder in there. And I want to show you guys something different fun. Take your ramrod. Oop. Put it in. Cock it. Ramrod gone. Uh. Uh. Yeah, it, it's. It's gone. L let's get a new pistol, shoot something a lot closer so that we get a visual cue. Since, if I'm not wrong, you should find the ramrod sticking out. from the whatever you shot. So let's shoot that uh, table that I always use. Oop, cock. There it goes. That's not quite what I wanted to show. And it loses uh, part of it. Can it be stored back in? Can it be used still? No. It becomes a useless metal rod. So, let's throw that back again. Let's try this again with it sticking out, hopefully. Since, if I'm not wrong, it should stick out. But I might be wrong, as we all know. I'm gonna need that in a bit, but whatever. Cock it. Yeah, okay, it's not gonna stick in. Disappointing. Oh well. Let's get a new one. Eh? Uh, let's get you. Uh, actually, let's not get you. Let's get you. Oh, I have. Uh, let's close you. Ah, shove that in. And I'm looking so forward to a full-length musket, or a muzzle-loading rifle. Because this is a lot of fun. And I would love an early one with like, an early scope. Ooh. That will be some good shit. Let's try and hit one of those targets. Is it cocked? I think so. Woo! So yeah, oh, and I should show, I don't remember if it's simulated in game, but in real life the flint lock or the flint itself can uh, wear out, so in game at least, you can replace your flint, get one here, get a new flint, pop it in, close it there, and you're ready to go again. I don't know if it wears out in game though. But anyways, I think this covers the flint lock. Lovely little interactive pistol. The most interactive weapon in Hot Dogs, Horses and Hand Grenades right now, I'd say. Hopefully we'll see some muzzle loader or something soon. Or a proper cannon. That would be amazing. But anyways, until uh, that time comes, I will see you guys in the next one. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe and all that, and uh, bye!